Hello, and welcome to the FinBiz 2030 Building Resilience podcast series. This episode features highlights from the Business Case for Doing Good webinar, hosted by Carla Futch and Shalene Gallagher. In this short episode, we hear from Gareth Parkin, CFO and Senior Vice President at Messer Americas. He is introduced here by Shalene. Now we're going to hear from Gareth Parkin, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer of the industrial gases company, Mercer Industries. Gareth is much younger than your typical CFO profile. And with that, he brings a refreshing perspective and approach to building the business case for doing good. Originally from the UK, he's joining us from his home in New Jersey. I'm sure that you will have many questions for him. So like Carla mentioned, please ensure to leave them in the chat box for our Q&A later today. Over to you, Gareth. Thanks, Charlene. That was too much of a glowing intro. I'm definitely the grey haired <laughs> member of the panel today, but um, I've tried to earn those grey hairs across the last few years. Um, having worked in a number of different continents and countries uh, and in the industrial gases business that I've been in, I get to see a number of end markets, segments and mega trends. Each of those boil down to a couple of basics. And for me, the reason that I entered into a financial role and the reason that I'm still incredibly passionate about um, everything that particularly FinBiz and more broadly the organizations can do is because we as financial leaders have a perfect opportunity to shape a corporation and to shape the future. We are the strategic partner and leader in a business in every sense. Now today I'm going to focus a little bit more on the business case. That is obviously the, the technical nuts and bolts of it. But if I pick up on what Paul said, it really boils down to this shareholder value creation, okay? A wonderful grand term, what on earth does it really mean? Okay, to me, that is all about increasing the quality of earnings. Quality of earnings is about sustainable, resilient impact. That does not always mean it has to be the highest margin, the highest yield, because we've got to think generations ahead, not just years ahead when you're talking about the P&L. The biggest daily consideration I would say I have in my role and in the industry I work in is how you deploy capital, how you deploy that in the smartest, most efficient way. That is one of the key things we as financial and business partners can really start to move on and think about our portfolio. How do we start to increase the amount of spend and deploy capital in those sustainable objectives? And lastly, and Paul picked up on this, I couldn't agree even more, but shareholders and stakeholders are not just people who own a share certificate. My daily job and more than 50% of my time is dealing with and considering all of the stakeholders of the business. And that is anyone and everyone who has a connection with my product, my services, my community that I service in directly and indirectly. So that holistic picture and trying to take a bigger step out of the daily grind and products and services that you offer really has been the advancement and beyond you know the amplification that we've seen through 2020 still the issues and significant impact that we're seeing today around uh, the covid pandemic and other social activities this is feeding into daily corporate life so again i, I touch on something kate said you know probably two three years ago a corporation's esg agenda it, it was an option Um, You had regulatory filings, but really, if you wanted to advance in that, it was for a few, predominantly kind of B2C style corporations. Today, it's not an option, it's an obligation and is absolutely everywhere. It is embedded in everything that I see, I do and I touch. And even again, as as today under Mesa, we're a privately owned, highly leveraged company, but it is an embedded part of my credit rating. It's an embedded part of what my investors want to understand in terms of how much am I investing in sustainable initiatives for their own portfolio as well as for mine. So whichever way you look at this, um, it is there. It is on us. It's not coming. It's right on top of us. And what we're also seeing from an economic perspective, we are absolutely on the cusp of really starting to launch um, segments and trends that are going to deliver true economic value and a step change that have real sustainable impact. If I give you a specific example in the US, one that's close to my heart, if I look at the decarbonization economy, and even specifically underneath that hydrogen mobility, we are on the cusp of that now. That is not a pipe dream. It was something that probably a few years ago, 
it kind of was a little touchy feely. It had to be backed by governments, not anymore. It is going to be a part of the step change. And if you're positioned to that from a corporation perspective, again, the quality of your earnings, the sustainability of that will be there for decades to come. So kind of boiling that down, my key things for you to consider and really kind of looking at this from a business case. So a traditional business case and a business case for doing good are not mutually exclusive. They're absolutely one in the same, but you just need to sometimes think about particularly some of these larger investments in a slightly different way. So number one, you've got to think long term. OK, if you're trying to put a large economic investment for sustainable growth in place, it goes beyond a traditional contract term that many of your companies might enact. We're talking here and, and my time window is probably at least 25 years, if not 35, 40 years in advance. So it's not a contract. It's a generation or two ahead. And with that, you need to kind of shift the mindset and, and shift the thinking a little. The second thing is to look at how you can look to lower capital costs and risk. This is always one of the biggest things I'm brought. Um, these projects won't hit me. Hurdle rate, they look too expensive. How do we take an opportunity of that? We'll look to partner up with people, share some of the technology risk, share some of the financial risk. You'll hear from a colleague of mine uh, next, you know, just in terms of what you can do with a number of bonds and opportunities coming up in the financial space. And again, with economic development, there are still a number of tax breaks and incentives at a federal or state level because all of these jobs have sustainability. They create opportunities and that is recognized and there's value to be taken there as well. So think about those. And lastly, by no means least, it's very easy. And I say this from personal experience as a CFO, you look at the risk. OK, that is your job. You're there to kind of govern. Again, it's part of the financial remit. You're there to keep security and governance. But with that, don't just look at the risks. Look at the strategic opportunities. Again, I can tell you from firsthand experience that investment in sustainable development has more strategic upside than you could possibly imagine at the point you make that investment. It unlocks a huge amount of potential in the future and it unlocks doors both from a reputational perspective and from an experience perspective that enter into spaces that will absolutely grow and develop and be future uh, revenue streams for your corporation to come in the future. So with that, at least if you cannot value that in the traditional business style sense, at least look to put that on the table and to be able to set that vision, set that tone and allow people to see the doors and the corridors that that could open. Again, I, I'll give you just a, a small example uh, around hydrogen mobility. Five or six years ago, uh, I was making investment decisions on hydrogen fuel cell stations uh, out in California. I was lucky if they wiped their face. That was my main premise to make sure that I didn't lose value, but I definitely wasn't going to earn or create any value. As I stand today, having gone through that from a corporation perspective, we know how to deploy that technology. We know how to run and utilize those assets. And as I said, now on the cusp of this decarbonization economy, we are positioned both reputationally, technically, and financially to look to capitalize on that. I didn't see that as a bet five years ago. It was an entry into a market. And now we've got a, a, a new trend and a new opportunity to open up a PSO for the next 50 years to come, which if we hadn't made that investment and thought a little bit more strategically in long term, we'd be locked out of now permanently. Thanks. To hear more podcasts or to find out more about FinBiz 2030, go to finbiz2030.com. Join the conversation using hashtag FinBiz2030. FinBiz 2030 is a joint initiative between One Young World and Chartered Accountants Worldwide. This podcast is produced by Big Top Multimedia. The original webinar series was produced by Be There Productions and Big Top Multimedia. Special thanks to Pexels.com. <laughs>